Hey, welcome back to Sober Now. I'm Jim LaPierre. Today I want to talk about the mythology of happiness. It's one of the amazing uh, themes that expands and spreads through just about everybody that I've ever served. No matter what reason a person comes in for therapy, sooner or later they say to me, Jim, I just want to be happy. And I usually say, oh, is that all? Okay, well, what do you need to be happy? And they'll suffer the realization that they're not really sure. So I have a homework assignment that I give out, and I'll ask folks to say, okay, go home, make a list of everything that you do that's in your control that makes you unhappy. And some of them are brave enough to do this, and they come back into the next session and say, okay, now what? And I'll smile and say, all that stuff you do, stop doing it. I think, honestly, happiness is a lousy goal. I think happiness is a choice. I think joy is a much better goal. Fulfillment and satisfaction are much better goals. And what I notice is our propensity for getting in our own way. So I'm going to give you just a few of the most common ways that we get in our own way, because if we can change those, then we can have that choice of happiness and we can more readily move towards things that are satisfying and fulfilling in our lives. So one of the biggest ones is, I bet you've heard yourself say at some point, I just wish. My experience is I just wish comes in two forms. The first form is self-pity, and the second form is essentially we're looking at something that we're powerless over, we're pining for it or towards it, and this has the net result of you know, making us unhappy. I've joked sometimes that I'm going to start a group for people who are engaging in some self-pity because what I notice is, especially in groups, we have a tendency to one up each other. It starts out by one person complaining about some circumstance in their life, and then another person chimes in and says, well, if you think you've got it rough, here's what I've got going on. And this is a horrible game. I don't know why anybody would want to play. But we do have a tendency to one-up each other in terms of who's got the greatest struggles and whose life is enduring the most hardship. And I always go back to 417 from the big book of AA and the discussion of acceptance as really being one of the keys to happiness or the life that we most want. There's a, an old-time piece of recovery advice that we should keep our head where our body's at. And it's a crude expression, but if you'll pardon it, I've always loved uh, the adage that I had one foot in yesterday and one foot in tomorrow and I was pissing all over today. Being fully present in the here and now and having a healthy perspective are absolutely vital to the life that we most want. I also say to folks that gratitude is a choice and one that serves us very well. Uh, gratitude lists and reflecting on the good things that are in your life really huge in terms of the impact on attitude. And I also encourage folks uh, to consider what are the things that you take for granted. Because I get to spend time with people who have lost everything, I get constant reminders about things that I might take for granted, like that my basic life needs are always met. I always have a place to live. I always have food to eat. And I think those things are so simple and so basic, but when something stays the same for a really long period of time, we stop thinking about it. It becomes what's normal for us, and that's the recipe for taking something for granted. I think the next key to happiness and, and having the life we most want is to make sure that we're living our priorities, to make sure that we always have goals that we're striving towards, uh, not endlessly killing ourselves to achieve, but making sure that we're not complacent and making sure that we're actively working towards fulfilling uh, a particular, whatever the next step is in our recovery, but also in our quality of life, in our health, and most importantly, in the relationships and connections that we have with others. I know that for myself, growing spiritually is really the key to everything. And I most readily experience my higher power through the connections that I make, the people that are placed in my path, and uh, I still joke with folks that I don't get email from God, so I have to listen and be present with the people that my higher power puts in my path, because those, in my experience, those are the people that my higher power most readily works through. 
So those are just a handful of the things that work really well for me. I hope that you're working a good program. I hope that you're making some investments in yourself and in others. And as always, if I can be of service to you, I would love to connect with you. Jim at SoberNow.com is the easiest way to do that. Please uh, put a quick like on this video and maybe a share so that we can expand this conversation with friends and family. And if you haven't already, head over to SoberNow's YouTube channel. Uh, well over 100 videos there now on different aspects of recovery, all for free. Some great resources that we just want to be able to share with you. Have a wonderful holiday season. Please take excellent care of yourself, and we'll talk again soon.